Joining us now to break down the day's top headlines and how they all come back to the 2020 race is Diamond and Silk, the host of Crystal Clear on Newsmax TV. So Diamond and Silk, when we talked last, we were once again talking coming out of the RNC about how the Republican Party had a little bit of momentum going with it. And we saw that reflected in the polls. We saw that even reflected in the president's conduct. He seemed to be having a little bit of a different swagger, if you will, than the weeks prior. He seems to be finding his groove a little bit. Do you think that the Republican Party is building on that momentum? I think President Trump is building on that momentum. That's Let me right. tell you something. The is doing an amazing job. All you have to do is look at his track record. Mm -hmm. He has one. If you look at Jim Crow Joe, Jim Crow Joe don't have one. That's right. Okay? And so that's why they want to continue to demean, vilify, and disparage our president in the media. Because he's winning. That's right. They don't try and stop losers, but they will try and stop a winner. And President Donald J. Trump is winning. That's right. And when we look at this recent scandal regarding the Woodward tapes, as many on, uh, are calling it on MSNBC, CNN, things of that nature, it does go along with what Joe Biden is trying to do, direct this whole election back to the beginning days of the coronavirus pandemic, focusing on what happened then and not the prospect of an economic recovery coming out of it. Because I think if you look at that, President Trump does have the advantage. I mean, we can look at the 2008 anemic recovery coming out of that recession. Joe Biden, of course, was VP then. And we can look at the economy just the weeks prior to the coronavirus pandemic hitting the shores of the U.S., which was at historic highs. So do you think that this whole media narrative is really playing into what Joe Biden is looking to get out of this race? Listen, I think the media narrative sucks. That's okay, right. that's my truth. That's yeah. the honest truth. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what the American people are focused on. Uh -huh. The American people are focused on prosperity and getting back into the swings of things. That's right. And we can do that. Why? Because President Trump left us in a surplus. That's right. The way he handled this virus has been phenomenal, okay? He the one that closed off our borders and closed off our country so other countries with this stuff wouldn't come in. You know who called him a, a racist and all kinds of disparaging words? It was Jim, Jim Crow, Crow Joe Crow. Biden and the left. That's so I don't right. want to hear nothing that they had to say. If they want to talk about something, how about the media talk about how they took and, 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 and put before the eyes of the American people inflating of the numbers, trying to scare the American people yep. into submission. That's right. Talk about that. They want to talk about how President Trump downplayed it. Let's talk about how the media upplayed this to put people in panic and, and fear. fear. And, you know, I think it's worth looking at some of the headlines around that very same time because the people who are now accusing President Trump of downplaying the crisis were doing the very same thing themselves. I mean, President Trump at the beginning days was being accused of creating panic when he closed down travel to China. People were saying, as you said, Joe Biden was one of them, calling it xenophobic. And many of those in the media were saying the exact same thing, saying that this is not going to be anything big, that the president is using this to his advantage. And now it looks like they're trying to completely reverse the script, the same way that Joe Biden is trying to reverse the script when it comes to protest. Uh, he initially said that uh, he supported protest, that he was uh, supporting what was going on, saying that perhaps the violence was something that just has to be accepted with what's going on. But now he's taking but, 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 a different approach. But, Go ahead. But let me say this. If the media is so concerned about something being downplayed, let's talk about China and how they've downplayed this virus. They are the one that concealed this and didn't reveal this. Let's talk about the WHO yep. and how they was right there in the bed with China mm -hmm, on right. this whole ordeal uh -huh. and did not tell the truth up front. Let's talk about that. And let's talk about the Americans that's playing with the WHO that contribute and donate money yes. to the WHO. Yes. I am tired of this. This, to me, seemed like crimes against humanity. humanity. And a lot of this here has to do with the media and the left wing of, of the Democrat Party. That's right. And if, that's an excellent point because we have to go off the information that we knew at the time. I mean, we have the luxury of hindsight to look back and say this virus is going to be very extreme. This is going to be something that uh, we haven't seen for the better part of a century. But at the beginning days, the World Health Organization was telling us that there wasn't even human to human transmission. They were saying that's that masks right. were ineffective. Joe Biden was saying the same thing. Even some Republicans on Capitol Hill were saying the very same thing. And you said something earlier in this conversation that I think is important, that President Trump is capitalizing on this moment. And we've talked to a lot of people since the RNC, Candace Owens most recently, uh, lawmakers as well. It seems that many people, many conservatives, say that President Trump is handling this moment from a cultural perspective the right way. 
but the Republican Party is not. They're doing the very same things. And when we talk about the Woodward tapes, too, we're hearing that Senator Lindsey Graham is the one that was pushing the president to sit down with him for almost 20 hours. Is the Republican Party being left behind as President Trump redefines the party? Well, I'm going to tell you what, they better play catch up. That's right. And stop the staying stuck on mustard and play catch up here. That's because right. President Trump now is the Republican Party. Yeah. He's the representation of the Republican Party. And let me tell you something. When people, if you have a problem with, oh, I don't know who to vote for, I'm not telling you to vote for the party. I'm telling you to vote for the person. That's right. I'm telling you to vote for Donald J. Trump. So it's time for the, the grand old party uh -huh. to play catch up because things have changed and there's a new sheriff in town. And you got to also remember that even Jesus had a Judas. That's right. You got to remember that there's mm -hmm. something called a deep state snakes that's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And and people like uh, Lindsey Graham, he's like one of those deep, the rats that's clogging the pipe. That's right. There's a lot of people that's been up there on the Hill, in Congress, in these different positions that don't mean this country any good. President Donald J. Trump is the new face of the Republican Party. Diamond and Silk, we're the new face of the Republican Party. It was President Trump that invited people in. That's right. As a black community. That's right. He the one asked, what, what the, the hell, hell do you have, have to lose? lose? It wasn't the Republican Party. It was Donald J. Trump. And don't they ever forget that. That's right. No, and I heard this from our viewers before, too. We could look back and see what Senator Lindsey Graham was saying about President Trump when he was running in 2016. It only was once he won the election where all of a sudden he was on board. So I think it's important for people to remember that a lot of the Republican Party wants to get back to the way that things were. But President Trump came into office, was shaking up the status quo. And that's why people who may not even necessarily be Republicans, may necessarily be more independent-minded, were more on board yeah. with President Trump because he represents a threat to the status quo and the things that things the way that things were going before. So I think that's why a lot of people are on board with him in 2016 and are at least more appealing to him in 2020 than perhaps many people initially thought. But Diamond and Silk, I really appreciate you coming on the program tonight, giving your perspective on these issues. Thank you. Thank you for having us.